Hello everyone, welcome to Rao Online. Today we are going to learn about cirrhosis. Now what is cirrhosis? Cirrhosis is technically a histopathologically defined entity. It is not a clinical diagnosis. It is a histopathological diagnosis which is characterized by progressive fibrosis resulting from the activation of stellate cells and this fibrosis is going to bring about architectural disruption with regenerative nodules. So this triad progressive fibrosis causing architectural disruption and evidence of regeneration in the form of regenerative nodules. This is what characterizes this histopathologically distinct entity called cirrhosis. Now this is going to result in a decrease in the hepatocellular mass and the function and that is in turn going to bring about a variety of clinical manifestations and complications but through which we recognize or through which we actually diagnose cirrhosis. So what are the causes of cirrhosis? So how do we classify cirrhosis etiologically? So alcohol related liver diseases can cause cirrhosis, chronic viral hepatitis particularly from hepatitis B and C, more commonly with hepatitis C because uh, recovery is generally the rule with acute hepatitis B whereas that is not the case with hepatitis C. Hepatitis C goes on into chronicity and therefore there could be a higher predisposition to cirrhosis with hepatitis C than B. Non-alcohol related fatty liver diseases. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with the uh, pandemic of obesity being on the rampage, this entity is becoming increasingly recognized. In fact, earlier what used to be classified as cryptogenic cirrhosis, now many studies have shown that those patients actually had cirrhosis associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Then autoimmune hepatitis can cause cirrhosis. Other rare inherited metabolic diseases like hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, all of these can cause cirrhosis. Then we have cardiac cirrhosis, a uh, long-standing uh, right heart failure with congestive hepatopathy can result in cardiac cirrhosis. And finally, we have this waste basket entity where when we are not able to determine the cause of cirrhosis, we classify the patient as to be having cryptogenic cirrhosis. So although there are these many causes for cirrhosis. The first three are alcohol related liver disease, chronic viral hepatitis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This constitutes the bulk of our cirrhosis. So what is decompensated cirrhosis? Now cirrhosis travels through various stages of stable cirrhosis and then we have compensated cirrhosis and then finally patient lands up in decompensated cirrhosis when the liver is not able to compensate. So at that point, how do we define this decompensated cirrhosis? Now decompensated cirrhosis is characterized by ascites, variceal bleeding and hepatic encephalopathy. In addition, sometimes significant impairment in the synthetic functions of the liver could result in coagulopathy and uh, severe affection of the liver can result in jaundice. So sometimes in addition presence of jaundice and coagulopathy points towards a severe or an advanced cirrhosis. But technically speaking the presence of ascites, variceal bleeding and hepatic encephalopathy I would like to remember this as the ABC of decompensated cirrhosis. So A for ascites, B for bleed particularly variceal bleed and C for coma or hepatic encephalopathy. This is what makes up the decompensated chronic liver disease or the decompensated cirrhosis. Now let's look at the pathological classification of cirrhosis. So histopathologically cirrhosis can be classified into micronodular cirrhosis which is going to be characterized by tiny nodules which are going to be less than 3 millimeter in diameter. Now this is again uh, caused by ABC, alcohol, biliary obstruction, chronic biliary obstruction and childhood cirrhosis, so Indian childhood cirrhosis. So these three are important causes of micronodular cirrhosis. In addition D, we can add a D, any problem with the drainage, so hepatic venous outflow obstruction that can also cause micronodular cirrhosis. So A for alcohol, B for biliary obstruction, long-standing biliary obstruction, C for childhood, so Indian childhood cirrhosis and D for drainage problems, so hepatic venous outflow obstruction, all of these can cause micronodular cirrhosis and hence 
Macronodular cirrhosis, what all can cause? So, if alcohol comes into micronodular, the other very important cause of cirrhosis is chronic viral hepatitis. So, that is going to come into macronodular. So, chronic viral hepatitis is an important cause of macronodular cirrhosis. And then you have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and primary biliary cholangitis. So, these are the important causes of macronodular cirrhosis. It is also good to remember that most causes of micronodular cirrhosis as they progress, as the disease becomes more and more advanced, they are all going to land up with macronodular cirrhosis also. Therefore, when we look at the liver, there is going to be both micronodules and macronodules and this picture is referred to as a mixed cirrhosis. Now, here we are able to see that the liver is studded with tiny nodules which uh, are barely visible. So, this is a macronodular cirrhosis which is seen with alcohol related liver disease. Here you are able to see these nice larger nodules which are distinctly visible. So, these larger nodules are characteristic of macronodular cirrhosis which is seen with chronic viral hepatitis. So, if you were to Remember just one important cause, I would say micronodular is going to be alcohol and macronodular is going to be chronic viral hepatitis, particularly B and C. So, this is just to show you how the um, histopathology looks in a patient with cirrhosis. So, this picture here is of a cirrhotic patient and this is the normal liver. Here. So, you are able to see that there is significant architectural distortion or significant architectural disruption. The normal uh, liver architecture is lost here and you are also able to see this uh, trichrome stain actually stains the collagen blue. So, we are actually able to distinctly see all these uh, collagen bands which are extensively present which characterizes significant fibrosis. And in between these collagen bands you are also able to see these regenerative nodules. So, this characterizes cirrhosis. So, let us look at what happens to a patient once he or she develops cirrhosis. So, how is it going to bring about the different complications and the different clinically significant features? 